Welcome to Tales of Blue, where I'm joined by a former striker who you can certainly describe as being one of our own. Disby born, a boyhood blue, who was rejected by the club as a teenager, only to find his way back to Main Road again and fulfil a childhood dream, which was once again ruthlessly taken away after just one season at the club in which he finished top league goal scorer, just missed out on a Wembley final hat-trick and won the hearts of many of your blues with his all-action style and commitment in the shirt, and not to mention he's dancing in front of the Kipats. I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Lillis. How are you doing, Mark? I'm all right, thank you, Mark. Thanks, thanks for joining us. How's the weather in Yorkshire? Cold, man. I'm on a, I'm on a hot bovril here. <laughs> it's, not, it's not alcohol, that. It's bovril, that. Yeah, it's a bit early for that. But, um, so, Mark, what, what are your earliest football city memories and which city players did you admire growing up as a blue? Well, the first ones was the... Uh, 69 uh, Cup final at Wembley, Leicester. I think we won one nil. Neil Neil Young scored. Absolutely, we were in the we were in the Leicester end. Me and my mum. Right. In them days, what the, the men went down on the Friday, uh, and had a mini weekend. All the men and the women and the and the ladies brought the, the young kids up, so they took me and they couldn't get tickets for the city end. So we ended up being in the the Leicester end. And when when we scored, I jumped up. I was nine years of age. Oh wow. I remember my mum grabbing me saying, sit down, sit down. <laughs> and, um, Leicester fans were great, they were all right. But that I, that's in my memory, that'll stay there. You went down on the train from Piccadilly to Houston. Uh, you'd have a pack up and that, and it, it was just fantastic. Unbelievable. And, and, to, and to see it was win 1-0, it was, it was brilliant. So did you go to the parade, Mark, when they come back with the Cup City? Yeah, we were doing, yeah in, in, in the middle of the town. Well, I mean, Nana had a pub about half a mile from town centre, um, the All Saints Tavern, um, just off Oxford Road. And um, we celebrated there, yeah. Great stuff. I mean, they're quite regular these days, the parades, aren't they? So, Well, they were back then as well, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. So, you are first spotted by City Chief Scout Harry Goodwin, signing schoolboy forms at City in October 1974. But you released, is it after a year or two years later, Mark? What were the reasons at the time? Do you remember it didn't work out first time round? No, we, we, I signed a 14-year-old, um, used to train on the car park behind the flat lane end. Um, and then at 16, you uh, you either got uh, an apprenticeship or, you, you know, you, you got released. And uh, unfortunately for me, I got released. Um, my dad went down to the ground with me and he just, I had to stay in the car for some reason. And he, co he, he come back and he, I said, what's happened? He said, you've not got an apprenticeship, son. So I started crying my eyes out. Yeah. It was mad, and um, he just said, "Look, we'll, we'll find another club. We'll get another club." So I went round trialing. He was great, my dad. He took me all over. Went to uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Plymouth, uh, Preston, uh, Burnley, Rochdale, Bury. Couldn't get, couldn't get in. Just kept getting, going for a week's trial, and so oh, unfortunately, we're not going to give you. And then my dad was an asphalter and he had a job in Huddersfield and he went up there and then got talking to a guy that he was doing the job for. And he was a, a director at Huddersfield Town. And he just said, oh, my, my lad's just got released from City. He said, oh, I'll have a word with the manager and get him sent down to us and we can have a trial. And that kicks off my career, Huddersfield. Ended up having eight years there. And Am then, I right in thinking, Mark, you originally started out as a defender? Yes, was set, I, I played for Manchester Boys from under 11s to under 16s as captain as a centre half, and right. then, um, I could play centre half, centre midfield, and, and centre forward to be truthful. But um, yeah, th th that that's what happened. But um, you know, to go back when I was 25 years of age as well and pull that shirt on, we, our debut was away at Coventry. Sammy McElroy was one of it was still my best mate, one of my best mates. He uh, he scored. Uh, at Coventry, I think there was 10,000 City fans had come, and we broke down the, the bus, broke down, and we had to push the skips and everything. And all the City fans were singing as we were doing it. But mad. So, you, you had seven years at Huddersfield before City came calling. Ten years after signing as schoolboys, you were back at Main Road. The tribunal sets a fee for about 132,000, I believe, to finalize the move. When did you first hear of that interest again from City, Mark? And was there any other clubs you could have gone to around that time? Yeah, I was going around clubs at that time. I was 25 on your own. So I took the, my wife, Jean, with me. Uh, and you go Sheffield Wednesday, Everton, Chelsea. Um, could have gone down to Chelsea, but they had two strikers. Um, she, the, and there was another one uh, there. But um, 
he come out and then I, I got, um, I think it was Bill, uh, it was Billy McNeil, yeah, Billy McNeil who signed me, and then Peter Swales, and then Francis Lee was on the board, and then um, went into a um, hotel in Northington in Manchester, and then we had um, a chat there, and then um, we, 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 agreed, we agreed it that I was going to sign, and um, couldn't believe it. Got in the car, drove straight to my mum and dad's, said, I'm going to, I'm going to play for City. Well, it was unbelievable. I mean, what were your first impressions of Billy McNeil? I mean, he was a legend of the game from his Celtic days. And he described you on upon joining City as a player that he'd admired for a long time. Yeah, he did. He, um, that, that's one of the reasons I couldn't really get my head around that. I got released from him as well. Yeah. So, well, you know, that, but uh, yeah, he, he, was, he, was a, he was a strong man. He managed at Villa, one of the clubs I played for after City. But um, no, it, it came, to be truthful, we was away on tour. And uh, Paul Power had got um, really not released, but he'd gone to Everton, and Paul was was uh, captain. So we went on tour. We had three games. I think it was Norway somewhere where we went. It could have been Holland, but and um, Mick McCarthy, you'll know, yeah, <laughs> Kenny Clemens and myself, and we all got a game each. We all got a captain, like, and um, I ended up winning my game one nil. I think Big Mick, he got a, he got a draw and Kenny Kenny Mark got a draw. So I, I rung home and thinking, I think I might have a chance of getting the captaincy as well. Um, anyway, we got home and then I got a call off uh, Jimmy Frisell and um, went down to went to the, down to the ground on an evening, took the wife and the new baby that we just had, uh, Jacob and, and Georgina, and um, my wife said, "What what do you think is going to happen?" I said, "Well, there's two things." I've either got the captain say, or they're going to sell me because they were struggling for for cash. And she said that, that, that was the kind of vibe the players had then, Mark. It was that sort of ruthless. You could either be, you know, make captain or, or you're gone. So that, amongst the squad, that was the feeling among the players. You, anybody could leave at any time. Yeah, definitely. If you got called down on your own, you know, if you're if you're at home and it was like it was, I would say about quarter past seven in the evening. Because when I got there, the cleaners were just finishing. I said, what's going off here? She said, I don't know. What, what, what have you come down here for? I said, I don't know. But I had a good feeling was like, yeah, th there's, there's money in this. And and Derby, Arthur Cox obviously liked me. And then before I knew it, I spoke to Arthur Cox. Because I said to Billy and Peter Swale, I said, I don't want to go. Yeah. Did, the agent said, who said, you know, who'd do the talking for you. I said, I don't want to go. I want to play. I want to play. So we... We, we're going to get money and it's going to pay the wages and, you know, you, you, you're a Manchester lad and you, you'll go down well with the city. I was thinking, and before I knew it, uh, got back home, Arthur Cox rang me and before I knew it, next morning I was there at half nine, all the press was at Derby, signed my contract, drove back to Manchester and thought, I'm a Derby player now. Yeah. Straight but simple, simple and quick as that. Yeah. I mean, that, that summer you first signed for City, Mark, they head off to a, a little pre-season tour of the Isle of Man. Was you involved in that trip? Do you remember anything about that? Yeah, remember the Isle of Man. Um, we, weren't we weren't allowed out. Well, we were allowed out, but we had to get back to the hotel for something like 12 o'clock at night. And um, <laughs> some and of us... <laughs> <laughs> we were sneaking in. We were sneaking to some of the lads. Uh, I don't think we had mobiles in them days. Well, no. we, we might have done, I don't know, but... They were saying, like, keep your bedroom window open, we'll climb through it and get in bed. So everyone was climbing through the thing. Uh, one, I think Kenny Clements got caught climbing through. So <laughs> the burglar coming in the hotel, but no, it was good. It was a good, a few good City fans travelled as well there. Yeah. So your first team debut comes, I know you mentioned it, 17th of August, 85, away to Coventry City. So how did it feel, Mark? I think we wore this colour strip that day, the away shirt, 1 1, Sammy Max scored. So what would it feel like to finally pull on the, the shirt? Well, unbelievable. I mean, it was unbelievable going out and, and going to seeing the city fans and obviously my family are there and, and mates that I used to go to school in Manchester in Didsbury. It used to be called St. Mark's, but it's Barlow High School now. Um, they they travelled down because they were some more city fans. Uh, Paul Williamson, that was uh, a red, so he didn't come. Um, but just to... But the main thing was we got through it and we got a point, but also... Going, I think, then on a Tuesday night to play at home uh, and I scored on my debut at home was was unbelievable. So that's against, against Leicester, Mark, was it? Your first City goal? Yeah. City, I believe. Did it have to be retaken, if my memory serves me right? Correct. You're right. I'd, I'd peeled off to the kickbacks 
giving it all this, <laughs> and, uh, and no one come, no one come near me. And the city fans were like clapping and that, but then I turned around and ref come up and said, "You got to take it again." Anyway, I took it again. I was absolutely knackered to be true. <laughs> so they went all over the dancing. Yeah, I went over, yeah, all the dancing. So I just jogged over to my mum and dad and waved at my brothers and all my family. Got to the halfway line, I was like, <sighs> I was out with the <laughs> but I, I scored and I scored in on your debut as well. And, and I had a good relationship with the Kip Axe and that because I used to come when we come out at match day, I used to always make sure that I clapped them because they paid your wages, the city. Sure. Do you know what I mean? It was just got that great, great vibe with them. Um, so that was that was my own debut. I was dead chuffed. A first taste of a Manchester derby arrives during September '85. Unfortunately, ends in a three 0 defeat. Despite the result, how much were you looking forward to that fixture as a blue? And what do we call of the afternoon? Oh, it was a terrible afternoon. I think uh, Brian Robson scored two. I think um, they turned us over. You know, we weren't really ready for it. It was. It's so different than when we went to Old Trafford uh, and got the two tour. Yeah. Um, but it, it was, I, I, I hardly really got a touch of it. I was trying to run in behind and that, but you know, they they done well. They done well. They had some good players in, in, yeah. in the team and that. We had some good players, but on the day, I think we let the people down. We let the fans down. I think, I, I think I did anyway. So, Maybe in case of it, the occasion got to us. We had not played a Manchester derby every for a couple of years, City. But how were you finding the transition to first division football, Mark? When you know you would step up a division, yeah. yeah the, the the thing I found is you you didn't get as many chances as you did when you're in the lower leagues. So if you got a chance, you had to put it away. You know, it was one of them where you didn't. Yeah. You know, you might only get one or two chances, but you, you need to stick it away. Unfortunately for me, I I, I could handle that. Um, I think he scored 14 or 15 that season. I think he ended up playing 51 games with the, yeah. all, all the other Cups and League Cup and that. But um, to, to get me goals, I, I needed to be on form. And, and I didn't... Paul Powell helped me a lot. We did a lot in training where, you know, you have to get hold of the ball and hold it up and lay it off. Uh, and sometimes it was bouncing off me. And, and he, he gave me a right going over. Uh, but he helped me and I improved the really lot at City because they had good players around me who were senior players yeah. helping me and that's what you need when you're a young lad you need that um, so you know that was it yeah so March 1986 Caesars go to Old Trafford on the Saturday uh, a 2-2 draw before heading to Wembley for the first ever full members cup final against Chelsea a crazy weekend Mark for sure football terms which wouldn't happen now what are your remember memories of that weekend oh so vivid. I ended up starting as a centre forward and finishing as a centre half because Kenny Clements got took off with a, 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 a knee injury. So Is Billy, it Old Trafford, Old Trafford, yeah. And Billy McNeil sent me back up to centre half, and Mark Hughes was playing up front then. So I knew that he was going away to to um, to play for another team. I just had a word in his ear, said, "Listen, Hughes, don't be putting yourself about because I might tap you a bit too hard." And he looked round at me and thought, "Who's he?" And to be truthful, he, he didn't. He, he did all right, like. But um, no, that was a that was a great game. I think Clive Wilson. We, we got back to we got back to two two, and then we got a corner right near the end in the strip for them. And I just about to run up to, into the penalty box, and uh, Paul Powell grabbed me back. He said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm going up to score the winner in front of the strip for them." He went, you're staying here, we're getting a point. I went, no, I'm going up there. He went, stay here. And he pulled my shirt, nearly pulled it off my back. And I was Mr. Slump. I just, I was on the halfway. And I told him to come in and next thing you know, the whistle went. And looking back at it, he's right. You know, to get a point at Old Trafford when you, when you were losing. Yeah. Um, he was a good shout, but I was buzzing to get up there. And I, I know, I knew if I scored, what celebration I was going to do in front of the... In front yeah. of the <laughs> That would have been legendary, wouldn't it, that one, to look back oh. on. So, you you denied the opportunity of becoming the first English player to score a Wembley hat-trick since Jeff Hurst did it in 66, thanks to Doug Rugby. Was it your goal, Mark, or did it catch Doug? Not the honest, but honest, honest decision? Yeah, it, it was his goal, yeah. Oh, OK, and let's have the other version. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, I... It skinned off his head, hit my head and went in. <laughs> That'll do for me. Yeah, but a crazy game, Mark. And if it had gone on for another few minutes, perhaps we might have been talking about a different result. Definitely, they've gone. They've gone. We we, we went 1-0 up, but um, 
I remember looking up at the scoreboard, it was 5-1, I looked over at my, my dad and, and all my family and they're all like this. Yeah. Thinking, we've got to do something because I I can't go home, we can't go back to Manchester 5-1. We can't, we can't do it. Anyway, look for me, Paul Simpson got put on. Yeah. Uh, he made he made a goal, uh, scored, which was a, a good header. Uh, then we got a penalty um, and put the ball down. Um, and that I think that made it 5-4. Um, so, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, put the ball down, went in off the post, didn't bother getting the ball. I just run back to the halfway yeah. line. We all got back to the halfway line. One of the lads brought the ball back. And I, I looked over and thinking, 5-4, we've got a great chance here. Yeah. Uh, and then within a minute, minute and a half, the whistle went and I dropped on my knees. I remember the commentator saying it so when I seen some the videos of uh, this, that, that game, the Members Cup final. Um, and I thought, 5-4, I was gutted in a way, but uh, in another way, we we you know we had a go. A lot of the city fans went out and yeah, then they, five one, yeah. Run back. One of one of my my, my cousins run you know left and then ended up running back at five three. We could have done with some of this World Cup extra time, couldn't we? They're getting at the moment. If another ten minutes would have done us that day, I think. Oh yeah, exactly. I can't believe it is this World Cup. You look, it's crazy, crazy. crazy. So McCarthy to Phillips, Phillips to Lillis, Lillis to Davis. A goal during the January FA Cup main road tie against Watford. Is that when the, the celebration was first born, Mark? Did you know you were going to do that dance? No, not really. But it just it just happened. You know, great goal. Oh yeah, uh, it was a great it was a great move. To be truthful, unbelievable move. Um, that sticks out that move as well. Yeah. Uh, big big make David Phillips across the. Gordon Davis won it. Yeah, great header. We peeled off and we were dancing round. And, <laughs> all right. and the, the, I think the City fans were <laughs> near, the, near the railings because you had railings in them days. Like I couldn't couldn't jump on them or jump over them. Um, but uh, yeah, great, great. When I see it back on, on on video, I'm looking at the the standard of passing and the weight of passing that we did that Mick did and David did and I yeah. the cross I did and Gordon Davis his, his header was like. On a very heavy pitch that day as well. So it was a great move. Yeah, it was. So 15 goals marked from 51 games in all competition was a healthy return in the first division. But what goal stands out for you as your favourite that season? Oh. I'd, I'd say... I'd, I'd, I'd say I scored... I, scored uh, I think it was on New Year's Day at uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, at Villa. I scored for City at Villa. Uh, we won one 0 I scored at the Holt end. Um, obviously, a former, I'm a former Villa player as well. But that went in because we needed a win, and it was yeah. going into the new year and that. And we needed a win, and uh, I ended up scoring. I think we, we won. Yeah, we we, we won one 0 and I scored and I peeled off right and do sprinted down to the City at City end, and uh, that stick that sticks out in, in, my, in my mind. And obviously, the my, my debut penalty um, sticks out as well. So, um, oh, tell you what, one of the other ones, uh, we went to Tottenham and turned them over 2-1 and I scored the second goal and I went clear through and Ray, Cle Ray Clements was in goal. Right. Uh, and as he come out, I just dinked it over him and then it rolled in and I turned away again and celebrated. That, that sits away because I got man of the match in that game. And you, in, in them, I think it was Holston Beer. Holston Pills, yeah. yeah. They were sponsored by them. Anyway, um, Next thing you know, into the dressing room, a big box of it come and they put it next to me. He said, oh, you've won the man of the match for City. So we took it on the bus and I'm thinking, oh, well, I think this might get finished anyway. It didn't, well, make it, it didn't make it home then, that man of the match no. award. <laughs> <laughs> no, we took the lads. No, it didn't make it home, no. <laughs> so after just one season, Mark, back at City, you were gone again, joining Derby County, which you meant, mentioned the swap deal, City getting cash and Trevor Christie. So as you've already covered, really, you've heard about that on the pre-season tour. So how disappointed, Mark, was you? It may sound a silly question to be leaving again so soon after arriving. Shock, to be truthful. I was. I, I don't think it hit me until I was, dri I was driving home from Derby and that, and I'm thinking, what's happened there? I was. I, I think I was in shock. Uh, and I was gutted, you know, because I knew I could have built on the first season, yeah. definitely. And uh, I'd experienced playing in that level, uh, I, I believe I handled it well, um, and not to get that second chance was um, was a blow really. And then going to Derby in my first game against Crystal Palace, 
Um, I ended up ripping, tearing my ligament in my knee. So I didn't play for Derby for like five, six months. Yeah. But they were top of the league and I, I got in for the last couple of games. I think scored one goal for them. That got us in, got us up more or less. Um, so that ruined my career a little bit. Come on, stop that me injury. And then um, and then I got sold in, in, in the summer after I recovered from, from my injury to Aston Villa. Yeah. It was a massive move for me and uh, ended up getting promotion with them in uh, 87 as well. Graham Taylor was my manager. He'd seen me playing for City against Watford and took a liking to me. So, um, and then my career, you know, went around pretty quick. Um, so that, you know, that was my, my, my thoughts. Like I just said there, I was in, a, I must have been in a bit of shock because I remember driving back, you're on your own. You, you can't really go to your mum and dad and then all your family, you know, the, you said you signed. Oh, I've signed for Derby, but you know, looking back at it, could I have stopped myself going to Derby? I don't think I could. No. We didn't have any agents. No one was there. Derby's press was there. They were all waiting for me. There was no one at City who could ring up. So no, you know, they were quite ruthless at City, Mark, weren't they? That you were told you needed to go because the club needed the money. It was made quite clear you had to go. Yeah, yeah, that was it. You know, uh, Billy. Uh, Billy was obviously was uh, uh, great with me, but. You know, he just said, you know, we're not sure whether you can handle this league. And I said, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it here, a full season. Yeah. I'm percent I'm a Manchester lad, I'm gonna run goal scorer. And, and goal scorer, yeah. So I think, yeah, I think I've just said it for about five times. Shot was the what one when and, and we go into Derby, which great club, don't get me wrong. And we and we took the family to live there. But um, you know, in in my heart, in my, in my stomach. It was falling apart. I, I just want. I'm a blue. I don't know what. Yeah. what, what was there said. ever an opportunity to go back to City, Mark? After you no, left? No, not really. I don't think. No, no. Um, I still, you know, would would have gone back. I would have, yeah. You know, sprinted back. You know, but uh, no, nothing really come of it. So how do you? How does Mark Lewis describe his time as a City player? Oh, fantastic! Unbelievable. To pull it, pull the shirt on the red and black shirt, the blue shirt, the white shirt was was unbelievable. And to run, you know, I can I can vivid see it now. You know, I can smell main road. I can coming down the tunnel, running out, sprinting out to do your warm up because you didn't have any sports science and nothing like that in them days. You know, you just you know you warmed yourself up, uh, and to get the response I did from the city fans. You know, even when we'd lost games and we always used to go up. You know, you'd, when you'd lost as well, you'd go, oh, that was tough because, you you know, they were swearing their heads off at you and yeah. throwing beer. At, well, they weren't throwing beer, but they were throwing plastic cups at you. But you just have to take it because I've been, a, I've, been a, I've, I've been a fan. I know what it's like. I'm still am now. Still are. As I say, Mark, you're spotted regularly at games and you have been for many a, a year now. So how's your relationship with the City fans now? Yeah, great. Especially the older, older ones. <laughs> <laughs> because my me, me son, Joshua, uh, I've, got two, I've got Jacob and Joshua uh, and Georgina who works at City. Um, I've I've got them, but um, the the people that come up for a photo or a signature, I, I would say in their late fifties, sixties. <laughs> but uh, hey, that, you know they they remember me, so that's great. You left an impression for sure, you know, from one season. So, which players do you enjoy watching in the current City side, and how do you see this season progressing for Pep's men? I just think, I think Pep's unbelievable. I mean, you know, some of the, I like I, when I see his interviews with the press and that. He, he's, he's very good, good. yeah. He's, he's excellent, yeah. And to see them, obviously, Foden, I, I like Foden, De Bruyne, but I just like them all. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I think the players, you know, in the modern day now, I've, I've coached in, mo in modern day at, at level at League Two and League Ones and that. But th these, when you when you see them go on, you know, if, if they get substituted off, they come off, they don't, they don't you know, kick anything or they don't. And the lads who were, who, were, who, were, who were on the substitute bench, when the when the you know TV camera goes on them, you know they, they're not slumped down in the in yeah. Like, yeah. Like, they're looking ready to, to to get on and make an impact. And he's he's got that togetherness. I think of they all believe in each other and that. And yeah, I think so. so. Him, him, him is going to be great because they just you know they make you stand up and clap and they just they're just fantastic. Yeah, everybody's buying into what he's doing there, Mark, isn't it? It's, it's just, uh, yeah, a great force. Pleasure to watch them. Yeah. So I've got a couple of teaser questions for you, Mark, to test your memory. 
Which two other players signed for City along with you during the summer of 1985? Sammy McElroy. Yeah. And the big centre-half from Rotherham. That's it. Give me his first name. Nigel. 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 Johnson. Nigel Johnson, yeah. He did, he Fantastic memory. He, 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 he was a lucky Nigel. He didn't. He got injured and he, he couldn't get himself back, back to fit. Yeah. But yeah, to be yeah. true, we had a big centre half called Mick McCarthy. To be true, for he didn't we get injured too much. No, we we had a class in training, uh, not a class of fight, nothing. We 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 collided together and I ended up with a broken nose and my jaw and I think. Mick ended up with something on his face. You might have to ask him that. I'm going to, yeah. If he remembers it. I think, and were, well, I, think I got rushed to one of the hospitals. I think he went to another one. And it was a nasty one. It was a nasty one, but it was just out of the blue that we were both going for the ball. And there, yeah, and Nigel Johnson and uh, Sammy Mack. So how many penalties did Mark Lillis score during the 85-86 season? Wow. Is this in all competitions? Six, uh, six, four, four. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Who made the most league appearances that season between Mick McCarthy and Mark Lillis? Oof. Well, I think I played 51 with all... Is that all the cup? Just league, just league, that one. Oh, just league. Uh, I'd say I might have just nicked it. Mick McCarthy, 38. Mark Lillis, 39. Yeah, you can tell him that. You're right again. So City lift the FA Youth Cup for the first time in the club's history that season. But who was the youth team captain? Uh, Steve Redmond. Steve Redmond. And who scored City's goal during your final appearance for the club against Luton Town on the 3rd of May, 1986? Was it Gordon Davis? It was Gordon Davis. Five out of five. Five out of five. Usually, my memory's like, whoa! <laughs> Four out of five, sorry. <laughs> so, what's Mark Lillis of 2022 20, up to? Well, I recently was at Scunthorpe United as assistant manager to Neil Cox. And then we got released over about 18 months ago. Uh, they, they're in League Two, and then they ended up going back down when we left. I think. Uh, the Rochdale manager that used to be, Keith Hill, he, he went and took uh, and then took him down. But uh, they were a good club, and then he ended up. Uh, before that, uh, I went. I was in India with John Gregory. We won the we won yeah. the Indian Super League out there, 2018. Uh, and then I worked in a care home in Manchester in Presswich for uh, 14 months. Unbelievable! Right when the pandemic kicked in, right. Uh, it was called the Fed uh, in Presswich in, Man in Manchester, uh, and then. I'm out, I'm out of the game at the minute. Um, I'm not, to be truthful, I've, I've done 45 years now coaching, playing. And, um, you know, I'm at that time now where do, do we go back in or do we, do we get? Uh, I've been in at City over the last couple of weeks doing some driving for them, you know, where you're picking up young players, bringing them into the academy uh, to do the training. Sure. Uh, and that's been fantastic, you know, especially with the young players. And then, you know, obviously... The, the young players and they get in the car and they just get the, you know, they've got the, the phones on. But to, to actually talk to them, you know, the other week I had a chat with one of the lads. Um, I said I played for Man City. I got leased at 16. He said, oh, I, I've, I've been told I've not got a scholarship and that. And uh, it, it was great. It was a fantastic. You could see that the City Academy, when, you know, when, when a young player leaves, they've got a lot of support behind them. Oh, you know, they, yeah thrown out, you know, they, they they get what he was telling me was unbelievable. And we really had a good chat and I felt I felt like it, you know, made him feel a little bit more, oh, it's, it's you know, it's happened to him. Oh, he's, he was a city player and that. And he said, Oh, I'll get me granddad to Google you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I said, yeah. I said, do that because I, I know how you feel. I've experienced what you're yeah. experiencing at 16. You've been told that you're not going to be at Man City. I said, I've experienced it, but these modern day lads now, they, they take it, you know, they take it, to, especially with the academy that City have got. There's a lot, a lot of support that they can yeah. view. It's great for them. And rightly so. Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and share your tales of blue. I wish you all the very, very best. Hope to see you again at more City fixtures. You're certainly once a blue, always a blue. Top man, Mark. You're a fantastic man. Thank you for this. Thanks, mate.